My name is Rob Ross Russell. I'm a Director of Studies in Medicine here at Peterhouse. I'm also a paediatrician at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge. Hi, I'm Catherine Walker and I work in the Peterhouse Admissions Office. So Rob, to start us off with, could you talk through the structure for the medicine course at Cambridge? Yes, yeah, so the structure of the medicine course at Cambridge and at Oxford is somewhat different than it is at most other medical schools. At Cambridge and at Oxford you have three years of very much basic science orientated, so far less contact with patients, uh, much more theoretical knowledge. And that suits some people better than others. So some people would find that the lack of access to patients is off-putting, but for many people getting a really solid grounding in the basic sciences before you get onto the patients is enormously valuable. So the first thing students need to think about when applying is writing their personal statement. Is there anything in particular that you like seeing on a personal statement for medicine? See, this is an interesting one because I, I, I've given talks on personal statements and I, I don't like personal statements much. I, so my view and, and what I say to people is this. When I'm interviewing students, when I'm interviewing people who are applying to come to Peterhouse, my main job is to level the playing field. It is to make sure that people get in on the basis of talent, not on the basis of preparation. So the difficulty with a personal statement is if you have a family who are medical, if you have access to, to medical uh, specialties you can go and visit, or if you come from a school where there's an awful lot of people involved in writing your personal statement, there's one school I know where the personal statement has to be signed off by three different teachers before they can send it in, it stops being personal. And I don't think personal statements level the playing field. Having said that, of course, we look at the personal statements. I think it's really important we do that. And uh, if you can get something about yourself in there, if you can talk a little bit about what does excite you and genuinely what excites you, then that's uh, really what you need to do in that uh, context. So step two is the pre-interview admissions assessment, the BMAT for medicine. How can students prepare for this and how do we use it in the admissions process? Yeah. So the BMAT is a three paper exam. There are two multiple choice questions and one essay paper. The two multiple choice question papers, one is on IQ, I suppose, and one is based around science-based questions. And we get a distribution curve of all the applicants from Cambridge. So we get a ranking, if you like, of where applicants sit relative to other applicants to Cambridge. We do look at the BMAT. The BMAT is of moderate importance, but not enormous importance. So. If you have scored very badly in the BMAT, it does make it very challenging for you to get a place here. Um, but certainly a good BMAT score is one part of a lot of things that we look for and only one part. And even if your BMAT score is not in the very top ranking, if it's just a reasonably good score and you perform well in interview particularly, then you've still got a very good chance of a place. So in terms of, of access to the BMAT, past papers are available online. You can get hold of past papers and run through those. That's probably the best way. I think MCQs are difficult to prepare for in any other way other than doing MCQs. Uh, uh, so I think it would be mostly getting them online. After that, we come to interviews themselves. Right. How are the interviews for medicine structured at Peterhouse? Well, so we have a either two or three stage process. So what we've tried to do in the last two or three years, rather scuppered in this last year by COVID of course, but what we've tried to do previously is have what you might see as conventional interviews, two conventional interviews, 30 minutes, two people interviewing you, firing questions at you that are mostly science-based questions uh, right the way through. Um, the last couple of years we've tried to introduce what I call an open book uh, element to the interview. So one of the difficulties uh, of interviewing anyone is to try not to use questions that simply ask for knowledge because knowledge is its very easy these days. If I want to know uh, things that are knowledge based, I pull my iPhone out and I look it up on Wikipedia or I look it up on whatever. Whereas actually what we want to do is, is see how people think. So we ask questions uh, that are centered around how people think. And in terms of the open book exam, we will give uh, applicants a period of time with a series of questions and case studies written out for them and we will tell them what we're going to ask them and they have half an hour with internet access to prepare their answers to look through to get the knowledge side of it established and then we can concentrate in the questions on interpretation on analysis on how they think uh, and that's what we uh, really like to uh, to do so what are you looking for from students in the interview and in the answers that they give so I'm not saying that we don't want knowledge. Of course we want bright, intelligent people who've got knowledge, but what we want is how they think. I think you've, you've got it exactly right, Catherine. The, we're looking to see how people deal with problems that they haven't faced before. 
So if you're faced with difficulties in medicine, and I'm faced you know, every day with stuff that I've not come across before or I'm not sure what to do, that is, that is medicine, it's not exact. You need to be able to take the knowledge you have to think about how it could be applied in that particular situation uh, and then to, to work out what you're going to do with that information. And we try to give people appropriately you know, pitched problems of that order to see how they think and we help people through it. So we ask them to interpret graphs or we uh, ask them to, to deal with problems that we give them that we hope they haven't really heard before. And then finally, why do you think students should apply to Peterhouse for Medicine? So I think there are probably three reasons why you choose your college if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge. Um, and the three reasons are size. So there are small colleges like Peterhouse, which is, as we say, the smallest of the colleges. And that's lovely because you get to know everyone and it's a very friendly uh, atmosphere. And I think it's fantastic. Um, in bigger colleges, there are other advantages. You've got wonderful orchestras or sports teams, perhaps, because you've got a bigger cash, but you won't know the people as well as you will in a small environment like Peterhouse. And the second is where the college is sited. So there are a number of colleges in the centre of town and that's if you enjoy that and want to be in the middle of the town then you need to look at those colleges. But for some people having colleges that are further out can be what they want and uh, you know there's colleges to cater for that as well if you, if you travel just a little bit further outside. But Peterhouse of course is right in the centre of Cambridge and if you're an engineer or a medic you're very very close to, uh, to lectures in the morning. And the third thing, which I think is the most difficult, is your director of studies. So the difference, if you like, between the colleges is often your director of studies. How do they approach it? And in medicine, there are some wonderful, wonderful directors of studies, some of whom are very uh, science-based. Uh, so uh, some colleges have uh, directors of studies that are based in the labs and are very, very basic science, and that's fantastic. Um, I'm much more clinical, so my supervisions are much more around the patients and we try to get the students up to the hospital more. So it's a real balance between, but I think, between finding the director of studies who perhaps might teach in the way that you want. And I think that's much more difficult to find. It, the, the websites aren't quite as clear about that. It's much more, it's much harder to work out what your director of studies will be like in any subject.